Welcome back to PA Live. It's an honor, a privilege right now because joining us, we have Dr. William Daniel Phillips. Doctor, before I tell everyone your historical significance, first off, welcome to PA Live. Thank you very much, Chris. It's great to be here. So uh, not only are you, were you born in Wilkes-Barre, grew up in Kingston, yeah. right here in Luzerne County, but you are a Nobel laureate. Yes. <laughs> that, that's quite amazing. So if people are thinking right now at home, a Nobel laureate, that's the Nobel Prize. You were awarded that in physics yes. and your contributions to sciences. So talk to us a little bit about that. Well, um, I work for the National Institute of Standards and Technology. This is the nation's laboratory for measurement. So that's what we do. Uh, among the things that we measure uh, is time. When you find out what time it is, we're somewhere in that loop telling you what, uh, uh, what time it is. Now, the best clocks are atomic clocks. Atoms are little tickers. And every clock has a ticker, and atomic clocks have, have tickers. Uh, uh, and those tickers are atoms themselves. The trouble is, those atoms are moving around really fast. Uh, we're talking about atoms in the gas phase. Now, in a gas, the atoms are whizzing around. At room temperature, they're whizzing around at about the speed of sound. It's not so easy to measure something that's moving at the speed of sound. So what I have devoted most of my career to is slowing those atoms down. And that is equivalent to cooling the gas of atoms. We get gases of atoms colder than anything else in the entire universe, as far as we know. The way in which we measure temperatures of things in physics is up from absolute zero. Now, let me just address the idea of why there is such a thing as absolute zero. Absolute zero is the coldest temperature you can have, even in principle. Why is there a coldest temperature? that you can have, even in principle. Well, remember, temperature is related to the fact that the atoms are moving around. So if you cool down a gas of atoms, what it means is the atoms are going to be going slower. Well, what's the slowest you can go? The slowest you can go is stopped, and that corresponds to absolute zero. Now, I've told a little bit of a lie here, because even at absolute zero, things don't stop moving because of some details having to do with quantum mechanics, but let's not worry about that. There is a lowest possible temperature. Room temperature measured up from absolute zero is about 300 degrees, where those degrees are Celsius degrees, okay? So that's where we are right now. Sitting here, we're at about 300 degrees. In the lecture that I'm gonna give later on uh, today, I'm gonna use a lot of liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is 77 degrees. For most people, it's the coldest stuff you've ever seen. The temperature of outer space is probably the coldest natural temperature in the universe. That's about three degrees above absolute zero. We get things down to a few billionths of a degree mm. above absolute zero. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's like mind blowing. Right, yeah. and that's what my life has been <laughs> for the last uh, 40 some years is getting things really cold, studying the atoms, that are that cold and using them to do all kinds of wonderful things. Well, I would say that maybe uh, growing up here in Northeast Pennsylvania, having the winters here, maybe, is that where your love of the cold well, came from? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, let me tell you another interesting story. My grandfather emigrated to the United States uh, uh, in the early part of the 20th century from Italy. My mother was born in Italy and came to this country in about 1920. Her father, my grandfather, whom I never knew, was uh, an ice maker. He had an ice plant, wow. and I've got his ice tongs. Oh. So <laughs> making things cold is Runs in the blood. Definitely Runs in the in family. The family. <laughs> well, you know, we, we talk about 
um, the importance of science, especially in, in children and mm. youth today. I mean, this area is known for the scientists, David Bohm, mm -hmm. Edward Lewis. Uh, um, my father, I would even count into that. He was a family physician, yeah. but before sure. that, uh, taught chemistry and physics. My brother, uh, he got his PhD in chemistry. And just to impress you, I didn't want to get it right. <laughs> wrong he said uh, to tell you that he studied coherent control of gas molecules with ultra fast lasers and this is something that, that I love <laughs> this this topic of coherent control yeah is is something that I really love <laughs> so I mean something is getting in the water here uh, <laughs> that so many people love science but if people are coming or thinking about coming tonight and thinking Okay, is it really true that everything that you're going to demonstrate is going to be able to be understood by the average person? It is, right? And you kind of have a demonstration to show us that? Absolutely. This is going to be an accessible lecture, something that's accessible to the general public. Uh, I guarantee that most of the things you're going to hear from me tonight uh, are going to be understandable. But more to the point, <laughs> the lecture is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm going to blow stuff up. I, <laughs> I, I hope in a controlled way. In a controlled okay. way, but it's still going to be fun. Uh, I'm going to uh, break stuff that normally isn't something you can break. Uh, maybe you could just reach over there yeah. and hand me that ball of those, those racquetballs. Okay, so here's... Uh, uh, okay, now... You know, we, we have to break that seal first. We have to break the seal. So, so, so you know that this is the real thing. I'm not going to show the brand because, of course, we don't want to do any product placement. That's here. like when magicians say, see, I just opened the exactly, deck of cards. Exactly, right, yeah. right. Okay, I'm going to take a ball like this yeah. and smash it to smithereens. Are you that strong? <laughs> no, because of what I'm going to do to that ball beforehand, I'm going to make it colder. And when you make something cold, its properties change. And that's one of the reasons why we do this business of making yeah. things cold, because the properties change in ways that we want. And just as one demonstration of how cold things can be and uh, uh, how, uh, how much colder we get things in our laboratory, I'm going to break a rubber ball. Yeah. I'm going to break a rubber band. I'm going to break a flower. <laughs> well, you know what? Even if you're not particularly fond of science, you're probably fond of breaking things. And this is maybe um, all the parents and, and grandparents watching right now, they're thinking, hey, now, now my kids and, you know, they're in my life, they're going to say, see, Mom? See, Dad? Dr. Phillips breaks things. And, you know, <laughs> most of the scientists that I know grew up doing things that they were, when they were kids that were at least mildly annoying to their parents. <laughs> now, you know, in my day, we had mechanical clocks. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody I know took apart a mechanical clock when they were a kid and put it back together. And sometimes it even worked after they put it back together. But sometimes it didn't, and of course, parents would find this annoying. But this is what we did as kids, is we, we took things apart to see what they uh, what they were like, to see how they worked. And if you think about it, that's what a scientist does. Yeah. We take apart the pieces of the world, the atoms and molecules, to see how they work. I, I am so looking forward to everyone being able to to witness this in person and, and to be in the presence of a Nobel laureate. It, it's, it's truly humbling to me that you set aside some time. Good afternoon, everyone. We're interrupting PA Live because we want to bring you some live coverage of President Joe Biden making a visit to the Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport in Scranton and Lackawanna County. First time since he became U.S. President. That's right, Becky. Welcome back to PA Live. Now, before we get back into our special cake that we're making in honor of President Biden's visit to Scranton, his hometown, I do yep. want to say that earlier in the show, you saw me chatting with the Nobel laureate, Dr. William Daniel Phillips. His presentation at Wilkes University is tonight at 6 o'clock at the Stark 
Learning Center, which is on the Wilkes University campus in Wilkesbury, Luzerne County. Six o'clock, you don't need a ticket or any sort of reservation to attend. And there are still many seats available. So I hope to see you there. I will be there in the audience. I cannot wait because like he said uh, in his interview, he's gonna be breaking stuff and blowing stuff up. So, so much fun. So Stark Learning Center, room 101, Wilkes University, six o'clock to see a Nobel Prize winner. Now, uh, something as worthy of a prize and a win is this cake that Faith Lane and Tanya is making. Aww, oh, thank you.